Okay, Hi Science 30. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a lengthy lecture today. We're going to go from slides 27 to 56. I'm going to talk about a bunch of equations today. I'm going to talk about electric circuits. And um, I'm going to can finish up discussions on electric motors here. Um, one thing we need to calculate in motors is current. Uh, so current, uh, the equation for current is I equals Q over T. This is not in your data booklet. So you should add that in under your electricity formulas. So current is measured in amperes and it's the amount of electrons moving through a set point over time. Remember electrons are measured in coulombs. So I equals Q over T here is an equation that addresses that on page 357. There's an example problem. Question 24 is a sample problem. So it says the compressor motor of a large refrigerator requires about 1.12 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of charge to pass through a segment of wire on one of its coils while it runs for 30 minutes. Determine the current that passes through the wire segment as the motor is running. So this is um, an I equals Q over T question. Right, I equals Q over T. Um, the charge is 1.12 times 10 to the fourth coulombs. Time is 30 minutes, and we have to convert that to seconds. So amperes is coulombs per second, so there's 60 seconds in a minute, right? So Right, uh, 30 times 60, oops, 30 times 60 seconds. That's 1800 seconds. Right, so the current um, running through um, that motor is uh, uh, 1.12 times 10 to the fourth coulombs over 1800 seconds. And that answer is uh, about 6.22 amps. So 6.22 repeating on pairs. And that's, we're going to look at current with some other questions, but this is your first exposure to that. We're going to talk about circuits, we're going to talk about transformer equations. I'm going to finish up section one of this unit and you should be able to do the quiz after I'm done this lecture. So talking about current, um, there are sort of two main types of current. Uh, so remember electrical plants or uh, generating stations are called generators, so an object that produces electrical energy for mechanical energy, right? So we'll take electricity from a plant and use it to f power any sort of uh, appliance or um, uh, electrical uh, contraption that we need to power our homes or our businesses. Um, there's two different types of current, direct current, which is a flow of charge that is constant and does not change direction. And AC is alternating current. So, uh, which is a flow of charge that reverses direction at regular intervals. Um, AC generators use electromagnets to create energy as the armature flows through a magnetic field. Okay, you get AC currents. Um, what happens with AC generators is the magnetic poles flip every now and then, so the spin of the armature will uh, reverse as a result. Okay, um, our grids kind of use a combination of AC and DC, um, but Large grids generally uh, at the power generating station have alternating current and, and the reason why we need alternating current on a large grid um, is because if we just had one way flow, so alternating current has two directional flow, so two um, transformer stations and two homes and, and back, so, so the current is constantly moving. If, if all of our, gener if all of our uh, electrical grids just had direct current, um, you would basically have uh, electrical power moving through the 
moving from the generating station to the sources and it would just build up and build up and build up and build up over time and you'd create massive voltages. So if I you know, didn't use power in my house for a long period of time, I don't know, let's say I went on vacation for two or three weeks and my uh, power plant close to my house was feeding my grid for two or three weeks, I would have this massive buildup of voltage um, behind my switches in my circuits and then when I got home and let's say, I don't know, turned on a light switch, all of that voltage would be dissipated and that would cause a massive blowout, right? So um, it's pretty dangerous to have direct current um, uh, generating stations, but it is quite efficient. Um, so we, in, on our modern grids, we generally have a combination of AC and DC and the AC uses an electromagnet and the electromagnet will have the poles flip. So the armature will switch directions which way it spins. And that will change the flow of electrons back and forth to and from these transformer boxes, right? So on a grid, um, generally power isn't sent right from a, a generating station to your house. It's stored in electrical transformer boxes. And you've seen that on, if you right, if you've looked at um, telephone poles and kind of seen the uh, cylindrical boxes on there, those are transformer stations. Um, and transfer stations throughout the grid exist as well, and you've, you've seen them before. Um, so we store power throughout the grid with AC, and that prevents um, you know, voltage from building up too, too much. Okay, uh, so you should understand the difference between the two of those. Uh, when we look at AC and uh, DC generators, <clears throat> this is in your textbook as well. So an AC, you need to understand, so that you need to be able to recognize the difference between an AC generator and a DC generator and motors as well. So an AC generator, um, so the electron flow flips as the current moves from magnetic poles and as the coil rotates, the positive and negative terminals flip. So like I said, that electromagnetic field changes its, um, uh, changes its orientation every now and then. This is gonna be important. Um, what types of commutators are attached to the armature will determine whether or not something is AC or DC. So you'll see this here. So in AC generators, um, we actually have this. So this is a little confusing, so you need to pay attention. Um, so in AC generators, you have multiple contacts. So you have these copper commutators. That's the point of electrical contact for the brushes. Um, but they are, they are split, but it's not called a split ring generator or a split ring commutator. It's called a slip ring because we can slip these rings on and off. So the slip ring generator, the, uh, sorry, the slip ring commutator is for the AC generator. So there's two points of electrical contact for the brushes. That's a, again, that's a slip ring. And then in DC, generators, we have one point of electrical contact. So kind of like one big, um, one big contact. And that's actually called a split ring because it totally splits the two sides of the, um, of the armature coils, okay? So these are completely separated. So you only have one direction for flow with the split ring. And so DC generators use split ring commutators and AC generators use slip ring commutators. And the slip rings are actually two points of contact and the split ring are one point of contact. So that's a little confusing because the slip ring looks like it's split. Okay. <clears throat> um, in your textbook, page 364, there are, this is a really good question here. Number one. It's asking you to identify what these different devices are. Okay, so whether or not these are motors or whether or not these are generators. Okay, so you, one is measuring voltage. So device one is measuring voltage. One, um, device two is, um, has a power source connected to it. And then this one is measuring voltage again. So these three devices either produce power or uh, use power. So device one and device three, because they have a voltmeter attached to them, we're measuring the voltage produced by those two 
objects. Um, so you know that those are generators. So it's asking question one is determine which of these three devices is best described as a DC motor, a DC generator, and an AC generator. So device one has a slip ring commutator. So you can see there's two different points of contact so you can reverse the flow. That is an AC generator. This guy right here is a battery source. So it has a power source and a single ring. That's a split ring commutator. So that's a DC motor. And this one is generating electricity because we're measuring the voltage. And this has a single ring. That is a DC generator, not a DC motor, right? So, so device two is a DC motor and device three is a DC generator. Okay, so that's page 364, take a look at that. And um, you have all of the anatomy of the electrical motors and generators that I talked about in the previous lecture. So you can take a look at that, okay? All right, so um, why do we use alternating current for power generation, right? So, so, the, so the key thing here is signal transmission weakens significantly with power transmission, right? So if, uh, for example, if a, if a house is 50 kilometers away versus a house that's 500 kilometers away, if we only have one direction for the electrical flow, then over time, the amount of electrons dissipate and you get more and more power being taken off the grid. So DC generators significantly lose power as we move further away from a, a generating source. Um, so AC power generation with the alternating current, we can store the power throughout the grid to make sure that it's not lost. Um, and as I said, charge can build up with DC generators. So if we don't use DC generators properly, then you have buildup of charge and then voltage is dissipated um, when we turn switches on and off, which can be really, really dangerous for um, people using the power um, at the end point. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a generator, right, at a power plant. So generators are needed. So any generator has the same four things. Um, you're gonna have uh, lots and lots of coils, uh, generally iron coils um, around the armature. The armature has to spin really quickly and, and that metal armature with the iron coils or the metal coils are moving through a really, really strong electromagnet very quickly and that creates electricity. Um, and as I said, you gotta have an iron core. Okay, um, the difference is, is what is your potential energy that's causing the armature to move, right? So whether or not we are burning a fuel um, which could be, um, which could be, uh, you know, chemical potential energy coming from fossil fuels like a coal-fired power plant. It could be nuclear energy from like a nuclear generator, um, right? Uh, you could be holding water back with a hydropower generator. You could be using thermodynamics with a geothermal power plant. Um, all of them do the same thing. They're all going to have a difference in energy, and that energy gets dissipated as it moves through the armature and causes the armature to spin. And as the armature spins through an electromagnet, that creates electricity. So they all have the same principle. It's the power source that is different. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, that's enough of that um, with generators and motors. So this lab right here, series and parallel circuits, this is kind of a thought lab that you're going to do. Um, again, we would do this with all of the, my lab material if we were in the lab, but we're not. So this page right here, page 374, this points out all of the parts of a circuit. So if I have any of these on there, that shows what it does. Okay, so um, I, right, so the two dashes shows a power source or a battery cell, right? Um, switches, um, resistor, so that could be an appliance that's hooked up, to, uh, you know, and obviously a lamp is a specific type of resistor. Anything that's taking power off the grid to, you know, uh, power itself um, is, uh, is a resistor. And again, this is page 374. Um, and then you have you have certain meters that could be on the uh, circuit as well. So this would be a voltmeter. 
this would be right so voltage this is an amp meter which would be measuring current and this signal rate symbol right here is called ohms and ohms measures resistance so um, how easy electrons can flow through your circuit so a series circuit has a single pathway for flow Right, so flows charge from, you know, the charges, you, see, you guys have seen this in elementary school, right? So I'm just going to expand on it a bit. So charges flow from one device to the next, um, and uh, voltage would decrease as, um, or the amount of uh, electricity would decrease as you move through each resistor. Okay. So that's a single pathway for flow. So if I were to turn one of these resistors off, then the current would be stopped. Right, so this is kind of like Christmas lights. If I, if I were to remove one Christmas light, the whole thing would go out because there's only one pathway for flow. So this is a parallel connection. So there's more than one available path for the electric current. Right, so if I were to block flow to resistor one here, then the electrons could move to these other pathways. So not all the bulbs would go out. So if these were all bulbs, if this one went out, then the other three would still be able to be lit. So multiple pathways for flow. So that's, a, that's an important piece with a parallel circuit. So our homes are connected in series and in parallel. So in general, when we look at um, uh, the power that's coming to our house, um, that's connected in series, but all of our appliances are connected in parallel, right? That's why I can turn on appliances on and off when I need to because I can open and close switches right so this is shows you this as well okay so generally when you look at a single cell um, or a single battery cell for power one small dash and a large dash is one battery typically when we look at um, uh, home appliance grids uh, a single cell equals one and a half volts, so you can add up the amount, right? So this would be one and a half volts, that's another one and a half volts. So this circuit would have a total of three volts. There's three bulbs, there's three resistors, so two bulbs and another resistor, so this could be another appliance. And then there's one pathway for flow. Okay, and this is a parallel circuit. So there's one and a half plus one and a half. Plus, so this is a four and a half volt circuit, resistor, and then a bulb and another resistor here, so three resistors. But there's multiple pathways for flow. Okay. So you have circuit equations. So this is uh, to calculating total resistance for um, a series circuit. So total resistance is the sum of all the resistors. So resistance increases as we add resistors in series because there's only one pathway for flow. Here's the deal with parallel though. Because we add another pathway, um, total resistance in a parallel is the reciprocal of the sum of all the resistances. So resistance increases as we add more resistors in series, but resistance actually decreases as we add resistance in parallel circuits. Okay. So you should think about those um, concepts when you do this lab. Okay. So if I add a pathway to res if I add a pathway. In parallel circuits and I'm gonna overall increase the voltage because resistance will decrease current increases with more pathways in parallel current stays the same in uh, in series circuits um, voltage and uh, in both uh, remain the same okay so there's another Show you here. Ah, here it is. 
Okay, so this little, you should add this into your data booklet. Um, so when we look at current, because there's only one pathway, um, as we add resistors, current doesn't change in a series circuit. So the same current has to deal, has to be provided for more resistors. In parallel, as we increase the amount of resistors, another pathway is, is added. So current increases as more bulbs are added because there's more space for electrons to flow. In a series circuit, um, voltage is the sum of all voltages. So voltage will increase with more bulbs added or more resistors added. So we need more voltage to fuel um, that pathway. In a parallel circuit, voltage stays the same. So if we have a 12 volt battery with multiple pathways, um, all those batteries will, re will receive 12 volts. But if I have a single pathway with a 12 volt battery, um, the amount of voltage that those resistors will um, receive depends on um, the voltage they can sustain. Uh, but that 12 volts will be spread across all the resistors in a single circuit. Um, they won't get the same amount. So one might get 2 volts, one might get 4 volts, yada, yada, yada. Um, resistance increases with more bulbs and resistance decreases with more bulb connections um, in a parallel circuit. Okay. And this is uh, another diagram showing circuit symbols. So I can turn switches on and off. So if I look at my parallel circuit up here, this is how you kind of how your house would work, right? So this would be a single appliance. It has a switch, right? So if I turn the switch off, I'm going to disconnect this pathway and the appliance won't work, right? Um, but if I, you know, turn it on, then the switch, the switch closes and electricity will flow through here. I could have a central switch attached to my entire parallel circuit, right? So this is the power source that's coming from this battery, right? So if I open this switch up, then that means no electricity can get to these other ones. So I could have a central switch on a parallel circuit and I can have, sen I can have separate switches on each resistor pathway as well, okay? Um, how do we measure these things? So uh, yes, this is a multimeter and right, we would generally have this, uh, you guys have all used multimeters in class. Um, but a multimeter measures voltage. Um, I can measure current with uh, an ammeter. I can measure resistance with ohm. So these multimeters will measure all three of those things. And again, if we were um, in class and we were making circuits, you would have a, a multimeter attached to the circuits you constructed, but you'll just have to do a thought lab with your circuit lab. All right, so again, that's that ohm. Um, ohms measure resistance. Um, in general, when you look at multimeters, um, you set your multimeter to 200 milliampere to measure current. Um, set the multimeter to uh, a measurement of 20 volts to measure voltage and measuring resistance we'll use uh, we'll use 2000 ohms generally with conventional circuits in science class okay <clears throat> um, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at this um, these equations in a second uh, so these are your equations here with your electricity formulas so V equals I times R, but I want to look at um, just general circuit equations. So, um, so this right here, so this uh, V equals I times R, or R equals zero, this is Ohm's law. Okay, um, so it's the ratio of voltage across the device to the current flowing through it. So the electrical, it's an electric component, right? So that's what a resistor is, that resists the flow of electric current in a circuit. Any object that has a, that a current has to pass through, um, and because that object is generally going to be taking power off the circuit. Right, so bigger voltages are needed as the amount of resistors increases. 
Um, so this is Ohm's law, V equals I times R. That's in your textbook. Oops. Okay, so Ohm's law, Ohm discovered that some materials maintain a constant ratio of voltage to current. It's a good measure for predicting the behavior of conductive material. So page 370 gives you um, examples of measuring Ohm's law. An example, right, example problem 1.9, example problem 1.10. Um, so I'm going to do these question, uh, example questions here. So question 32 says... <clears throat> Uh, a low intensity light bulb illuminates the numbers on the outside of a house. The bulb is operated by one of the 120 volt household circuits and draws 0 0.25 amps for current. So the voltage is 120 volts and the, the current is 0 0.25 amps. So uh, question, the question asks, is the current passing through the bulb AC or DC? Um, so there is current coming directly to the um, to the light bulb, so it would be direct current. And then the question has to determine the resistance. All right, so V equals I times R. Right, so V equals I times R. Um, my voltage is 120 volts. My current is 0 0.25 amps, and it's asking me to find resistance. Okay. All right, so let me clear this off. Um, so, when I solve for resistance, um, V over I is going to equal resistance. Right, so 120 volts divided by 0 0.25 amps um, equals R. And 120 divided by 0.25 equals uh, 480 ohms. Right, equals resistance. Okay. Thirty-three. On page 370 says the four cells in a flashlight uh, form a battery with a total voltage of 6 volts. So this would be a DC current because it's either turned on or off and the current is coming directly from the battery in the flashlight. And it's asking for current. So again, V equals I times R. I have 6 volts. And I have a resistance of 8 ohms, right? So V equals I times R. And let's solve for this. 6 volts and a resistance of 8 ohms. Right, 6 divided by 8 will equal my resistance. So that's going to be 0 0.75 amps equals my current. Okay. All right, so we can apply this to circuits as well. So resistance of circuits, right? This would be the total resistance of series circuit, and that's the total resistance of a parallel circuit. 
So just to read through this really quickly. This is on my slides. So in a series, the total resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. Um, current increases in a parallel circuit because we add more pathways. So resistance diminishes um, as more resistors are added. Okay. Okay, so sample problems for this. Page 379, example problem 1.12. Um, this looks at um, a series circuit. And then page 380, example problem 1.13. This looks at a parallel circuit. Okay, so you can take a look at that, but I'm going to do some. Ex I'm going to do the examples here. Okay, so question 36 on page 381 says using the following schematic diagram. So this is a voltmeter. Voltmeter. This is a. These are resistors. That's current. So that's a series circuit. So the question is asking determine the total voltage available. Um, to this circuit, so so okay, so these are two volt, uh, so these are two power sources, and they're both six volts. So the total power available to this circuit is uh, twelve volts. Okay, I'm actually going to write this here. Okay, so page 381, um, A asks, what's the total voltage available? So A is uh, 12 volts. Okay. This has to uh, calculate the total resistance of the two bulbs. So resistance total in a series equals R1 plus R2, or yada, yada, yada. There are two resistors. Okay, so it's going to be 20 ohms plus 40 ohms. So my total resistance is 60 ohms for B. C is asking, calculate the current flowing through each of the bulbs. So for uh, bulb one, so bulb one, V equals I times R. Okay, so I have a 12 volts and I have a current 